All right, so in this section, we're going to go right in and set up our first Kubernetes cluster, and it will be managed by AWS. So just before we do so, because it's quite easy to do, straightforward, I want to give you a high-level overview of why we need to do things the way we're doing them. So if we look at a Kubernetes architecture, then we usually want something to be distributed across three availability zones, thus to maintain high availability. And so if you were to deploy stuff on your own for a Kubernetes cluster, you would have to deploy master nodes, usually on EC2 instances in 3AZ. And so you would have to manage these. On top of it, for Kubernetes to work properly, you need to have ETCD running. And again, because you want things to be highly available, you would have three ETCD instances at least one in each AZ, and that gives you high availability. And then once everything is set up, so that's called the control plane, once the control plane is set up, then you can create your Kubernetes working nodes, and they can be in auto-scaling groups, they can be across multiple AZ, it's up to you, and then you have nodes. And so when you look at this setup, a lot of things can fail if you were to manage everything. And so before EKS, you had to manage everything. And so usually what fails really, really bad is going to be the master nodes or the ETCD cluster. If you have a failure and you don't know how to do things, or if instances get terminated, then you're in, bit in trouble and you have to basically fix things yourself. So EKS came in and said, all right, I want to show you that we are going as Amazon to manage all your master nodes and your etcd, and we're going to handle all the load you need. So they will scale the services as needed, and they will repair them as needed. So they will help check them. So Amazon said, "You are, we are going to manage for you the master nodes and etcd, and you don't have to worry about those. And you, as a user, you still have to create your Kubernetes working nodes, but it's up to you to see how you want to do them, and you just join them into the control plane." And so from a management perspective, that's really awesome because us as user, as you'll see, we'll create a Kubernetes cluster straight by doing a few clicks and we'll be done. And then later on, we'll create our workers and attach them to the cluster. So as you can imagine though, we'll have to set up a few things such as our subnets, our VPC, our IAM roles, our SSH keys, our auto scaling groups, our EC2 instances, all these things we have to set up once before, but the complicated engineering around managing the master nodes and the etcd is done by AWS. So from an architectural point of view, then we have this control plane and based on the cluster, you'll have a URL like mycluster.eks.amazonaws.com and then our worker nodes will be attached to it. So they'll be in different AZ. So we have high availability and then our kubectl uh, will be directly running against that control plane. And so we'll have to set it up in the right way to basically leverage our credentials and obtain authorization from the Kubernetes cluster. So this is at a high level overview. Gerge will go into the details of how we do actually these things, but I wanted to give you an idea of why we're doing these things before we actually did them.